This is my new home server rack. It's the first time I've ever built something like this at home and there was so much fun and absolutely one of the most exciting and challenging projects I've ever done in my home lab. This will be the foundation for all of my upcoming tech projects that I'm building, such as my new home network with 10 gigabits, my firewall projects, a new storage server that I'm planning, and of course, I want to show you how I've done it. So what components and devices I've put into it and everything else that I've learned during this project. So if you'd like to build such a server rack at home as well, but you're not sure how you should do that, I hope this will help you a little bit. Uh, but let me stop talking. J just come on, I want to show it to you. As I said, this is the first server rack that I've ever built at home and I've spent hours and hours of researching it and finding out what is the best way to do it. And I want to split this into separate videos to show you exactly what I've done. So this is only the first part. There will be at least three more videos about the different devices here. But let's start at the beginning and show you the room where I've placed this server rack. So this room, you should be already very familiar with it because this is the main room where I just work, shoot and edit all of my videos. So you can see there is my workspace over here, my desk where I just uh, use it for live streaming, shooting and editing videos. But also besides that studio, there is a very small room that I think is perfect for my new home server project and put a big server rack in here. So let me show you that room. And you can see this is not really big. So it's actually a very small room that I previously just used as a storage room and I believe this place here should be just perfect to put a server rack over here and with all the internet cables and the connections I just need to go through this wall to be in the studio setup so you can see there's already a small hole in here where I just need to go through with all the ethernet and fiber channel cables that I'm planning in my setup and then just use a big patch panel in the server rack where I just want to connect all the networking devices so I will show you that later how that works. <laughs> So that was my plan, but let me also talk a little more about the different components I've built this with. Because if you've never done this before, you might ask yourself, where do you start? And which components and devices would you actually need to build such a server rack? I asked myself the same questions and I thought a lot about which server rack I should get, how big should it be and more important than that, which type of server rack. Because there are three main types of server racks you can get and all of these have several advantages and disadvantages. So it's not always easy to find the right type of server rack for your use case. It also depends on the room and the environment where you want to place it and of course how much stuff do you want to put into it. And when you start looking for server racks, most of them are probably fully enclosed closured server racks. They are usually heavy with doors and walls and a separate cooling. Because of that they are often used in data centers and professional environments. First I wanted to get one of these, but the main problem why this wasn't a great option for me is space. Also most of the enclosured racks are delivered fully assembled and they are really heavy. I would need to lift them up all the stairs into my server room and this is nothing I wanted to do. So I decided to pick a different type of server rack and go with an open frame server rack that I could quickly get up here and assemble myself. Open frame racks don't have any doors, walls or dedicated cooling, so they are not so heavy and the other advantage is that they don't need so much space. With an open frame server rack you will have much more space to work and it's still capable enough to carry even heavy servers. There is by the way also a third type of server rack which would be the wall mount rack but I haven't really considered one of these because they are usually for smaller network devices so they are mostly not stable enough to carry heavy machines that I needed. And if if you have large servers that go very deep inside the server rack, the wall mount racks aren't just big enough for that. But whatever server rack you'd like to build, I can just tell you, always look at the specifications and carefully plan what devices you need and if the server rack is capable enough to carry them all. Otherwise you may end up not having enough space for your servers and that wouldn't be great. 
And so I think it was absolutely the right decision for me to go with an open frame servo rack because it is just the best option for me. The one that I got is a 25 unit open frame server rack from StarTech. It's the first server rack that I ever bought, so I can't really say anything about the different rack manufacturers, but I heard many good things about StarTech and they also have a variety of different types of server products, so that seemed a good choice for me. I also bought some accessories for the server rack, some small stuff like screws and cage nuts. If you buy a server rack, it should come with these, but it doesn't hurt you to get some additional ones in black and they just look better. <laughs> they are used to mount the devices into your server rack and the server racks and rack mount devices are usually all standardized. So if you get any switches, servers or rails, they usually fit in all the same way. You can mount the smaller network devices directly into the server rack because they don't go so deep inside. It's stable enough to carry all these devices, but if you want to get some heavy weight servers, you should get some rails. Then you can easily slide the server in and out of the rack if you need to do some maintenance work for example, so that's really comfortable. And these rails usually don't cost too much and are mostly also standardized. I've used these rails to mount all my servers into the rack. It's also helpful to get a shelf for your server rack where you can put smaller devices you can't mount, like uh, smaller switches, power supplies and so forth. So I also got one shelf to put my small PoE switch in there or my Philips U bridge. So these things, this is just perfect. But the most important thing that I bought for my server rack was a patch panel to connect network devices in other rooms of my house. I don't have so many devices in my house that I have connected to the network because in this old house where I'm living, I literally have no network cables in any room. So I needed to lay all the cables myself. What I've done is I've connected four cut six cables from my office and the living room directly through the wall to my patch panel in the server rack. So you can see the patch panel as an extension to your network cable and this is really great to connect all the devices in your house easily with a switch in your server rack. So these are most of the parts that I got for my home server rack. I also got some smaller things like blind covers and cable organizers. By the way, if you want to have a detailed list of all my hardware builds and devices that I'm using, for example, my home lab, my server rack, but also my YouTube studio, then just take a look at my kit page. There you will find all the components and devices, mostly with localized Amazon links where you can just directly buy them. And it also supports my YouTube channel a little bit if you're using the links to buy stuff because I get a small portion of the revenue which doesn't cost you any extra money. So this is a really cool website. Check it out. And that is basically all I've done. So I did a lot of researching what I should need to build this server rack and then I just ordered this stuff. <laughs> And guys, I can just say that made so much fun to build this home server rack. I mean, it is always cool to get your hands on new hardware, but if you're building your first server rack at home and just put some amazing stuff in it, this is so cool. <laughs>So this is a final home server rack. It took me a few days to build it and even more weeks to set up all the components and devices. I got most of them because they are really interesting projects that I'm doing in my home lab right now, like my Proxmox server where I'm running my virtual machines or my new storage server that I'm planning to build. And if you're wondering how you can secure the access to your servers in your home lab or even in professional environments, I quickly want to show you Teleport. Teleport is an open source access plane to protect your computer resources sources with two-factor authentication and audit logging and user access management. It supports SSH, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications, and in the newest version, even RDP access in Active Directories. Really cool stuff. I'm using this as my zero trust access plane when I'm, for example, outside of my home lab network or when I securely want to reach my cloud instances and Kubernetes. It's really cool. And you can also use it as a jump host to access computing resources behind NAT firewalls. And the best is it doesn't cost you anything. The community edition is completely free and open source, so just download and try it out. I've done a full video tutorial about Teleport in the past, so you will find that with a link to their website in the video description down below. So back to my server rack. I'm still not finished with all of these projects here, but let me quickly walk you through some of the devices I've placed into it, because if you're building such a server rack, you might have some ideas for networking devices servers or storage systems you would like to put into it. Uh, by the way, that's totally up to you. So technically you can put 
anything into a server rack like this. But let me show you some of the stuff that I've put into my server rack and let's start with a network switch that connects all the devices in the server rack and the devices on the patch panel. This is a TP-Link 24 port gigabit switch so it's very essential to connect all the networking devices in a server rack so when you're building such a thing you absolutely want to get one of these rack mounted switches. It doesn't need to be TP-Link though so you will find many rack mount switches from many different vendors and I can't really recommend uh, some specific models here because I had no special preferences. I just have a few devices that I wanted to connect and I also need to say this is only a temporary solution. I'm going to replace that uh, switch pretty soon so I do not need anything expensive. I just bought the cheapest rack mount switch that I could find online and these fanless unmanaged switches just cost around 100 euros I would say. If you need more professional features of course you can pay much more for better managed switches depending on what you need but if you just want to connect a few devices like printers pcs and some things like that an unmanaged switch will absolutely do the job for powering my access points i also got a separate small poe switch uh, because i currently only have two access points in my house for my wi-fi and this is a small five port poe switch from netgear it's cheap it's unmanaged and again it just does the job i think it costs around 50 euros and because it's not rack mounted i just put this one on a shelf these smaller poe switches are great to power a few devices like wi-fi access points or also raspberry pi i believe you can power with that again nothing really special about it okay so far so good i know there's nothing fancy in regards to networking in my home lab besides the firewall but we will get later to that uh, sometimes simplicity is all you need and uh, don't worry it will get more enjoyable because i'm already planning to upgrade these switches to build more advanced scenarios in my home lab and experiment with VLANs and 10 gigabits. But that's a topic for future videos, of course. Let's leave networking aside for a while and uh, let me show you why I mainly bought this server rack uh, because I want to put some uh, servers in it. <laughs> And this one here is my Proxmox server where I'm running all of my workloads and virtual machines in my home lab. You might still remember this one uh, when you watch my Proxmox video. This is by the way still the same machine, I just uh, put it into a server rack case and I made some small modifications to it. Although this looks like a professional server machine, inside it is still more like a desktop PC than a server. It's running an M80X motherboard from ASRock and an AMD Ryzen 3600 with uh, 32 2 gigabytes of memory. And this is absolutely enough for my home lab. The AMD Ryzen CPUs are very power efficient and still have a lot of computing power to run several virtual machines and plenty of workloads. Sure, it always depends on your personal needs. Uh, so I've seen many people building server racks and home labs with professional and expensive server equipment. But for my home lab, this is just a perfect and cost efficient solution to build it on desktop hardware. I bought this case from Intertech, which is a German company, and they produce many PC cases for desktop PCs and also server racks and storage cases. And they are actually pretty good for what you need to pay here. The only problem I had with this case was that the desktop PC fans I got didn't fit well into the frames. I finally got it working, but it's definitely not how it should be done. And yeah, this taught me if you're buying a server case or any professional server equipment, you sometimes have different standards than on desktop or consumer hardware. But generally, you can put anything into a server rack case. So if you have enough space and if it supports your desired form factor, it should work. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with getting this case because I just could put my regular server that I already had based on consumer hardware into my server rack, which saved me a ton of money. And also because I've replaced the fans and used consumer hardware, this is absolutely quiet. Another great advantage for me because the server rack is exactly right beside my YouTube studio. The only thing you can hear in this room now is my firewall, the Sophos XGS 2100. And to be honest, it is not really loud, it's probably compared comparable to a small rack mount switch with fans. I was a bit worried about it because professional server equipment can be noisy sometimes, but this one is still very quiet. In the past I ran my firewall solution as a virtual machine on the Proxmox server I just talked about, but as you can see now, I have replaced it. I think generally it is a good idea to separate your networking solutions from a hypervisor. Sure, this requires more hardware, but it's more reliable in my opinion. And what I've also not told you is that I've put a 10 gigabit fiber channel card into my Proxmox server that I have connected to this firewall. 
I haven't fully finished this project, so that's why I can't give you too many details about it right now. But my plan is to connect my firewall, the Proxmox server, my workstation PC and my new storage server all with 10 gigabit. Oh, I haven't told you about my new storage server project that I'm planning. Oh man, this is just too much stuff. Yeah, I, I know there are so many projects and things that I'm doing right now in my home server rack. And I think next I will show you the firewall solution in a bit more detail because this uh, thing is just amazing. But anyway, I hope if you're still watching at this point, I got you excited about building your own home lab, maybe in a server rack. And I hope you got some ideas about what you can all do with this. Don't worry, I will give you a full home lab tour probably in a few months when I'm finished with all of these projects. And if you'd like to start building your own projects right now, always remember it doesn't need to be a big server rack with any expensive professional server equipment. You can just start with a single desktop PC, install a Linux operating system or a hypervisor like Proxmox and just take it from there. But still it's nice to have such a server rack, it just makes a lot of things easier and it also makes so much fun. And I can't wait to start working on all of these projects like my storage server or the home lab automation, Kubernetes. Ah. There are so many things you can all do with this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks everybody for watching and I will catch you in the next part of this video. Take care. Bye bye.